Okay, so I'm just going to run through uh, the two and three cell charging. Um, basically, every new bit of RC kit we buy, whether it's a car or a quad or a boat or anything, you'll get the battery with it and also a charger. Now, the charger is not going to be an expensive charger, invariably. Uh, you'd be lucky if you do get one, especially on the cheaper quads. It's going to be a very cheap way of charging. Uh, this one actually came with a 2000 milliamp hour uh, battery and it's a two cell battery. So it has a, a, a sort of mains draw of power here that goes to the quad or the car and then here is uh, basically the there's two cells in here and it splits them out through here for charging and balancing and it's important that these cells remain balanced because uh, they're going to last longer and also give you more performance whether that's a longer flight or a more aggressive flight uh, Balanced charging is going to work a lot better for you. So um, it's important that we use a balanced charger. So they're charging it through the balanced charger port here, and that's what we connect up. Uh, but like I say, 2000 milliamp hour here and 800 milliamp hour is the output of the actual charger itself. So 800 into 2000, basically two and a half. So two and a half to three hours to charge uh, using that setup. So it's quite a long charge, uh, quite a long time. Uh, and if you're, if you're new to it, you really want to get back up in the air quick. Um, there's ones that take a lot longer. I mean, if I, for example, put it on to this one here, I mean, I don't suggest you muck around with changing the charger that came with it with other chargers. But for example, this one only puts out at 500 milliamp hour connects the same way but that's going to take four hours to charge this up then at least uh, probably four to five hours so you can see as soon as you start dropping the milliamp hours you're going to take longer and longer to charge your battery what you mustn't do is go over um, the uh, um, milliamp hours of the actual battery itself for example, if I pick up this one here, uh, which is a small one off one of my Hubsons, uh, 610 milliamp hours. Well, this battery charger will be okay for it. But if I pop this one on, I'm gonna be charging it up at 800 milliamp hour. Now that's overcharging it uh, to start with. The, the actual uh, rate of what it's gonna charge at is gonna be incorrect. So you mustn't ever go over uh, this uh, number here, whatever that be, whether it be 1,000, 600, or 300, or whatever. You have to be very careful you don't overcharge them. Uh, there's lots of horror stories out there of uh, LiPo batteries catching fire, and uh, so really don't muck about with that. Uh, keep, keep the one, if you're not confident with what you're doing, keep the one that you've got with it, and then charge it with that. Of course, there's other ways of charging. You could use a professional charger like I, I do with this one here. And I've done a video on how to use this and I'll put a link down in the description for that. Basically, this one connects up through the actual main power, as you can see there. And then uh, through the balance charger port as well. All plugs into there and we program it up here. Uh, and like I say, the video runs through exactly how to do that. So it's a little bit more involved. Uh, the good news is it will charge your batteries in around an hour um, uh, up to uh, 5,000 milliamp hour batteries. And you choose uh, the power that's actually coming out to your battery so you match it up so it charges quicker and it's gonna be a balanced charge as well. So it's rather good. But this is quite an expensive unit. What I'm after showing you is a really cheap unit that I use quite a lot. That's a really cheap and easy unit to use. Uh, they uh, they come in various guises, and I put several links down the bottom there, um, so you can have a have a look through a trove around and see which ones for you. They're about a quarter, if not less, of the price of the professional charger but I actually find this charges really really well um, the balance charge on it is superb whether I just got a lucky one I don't know but it certainly works and all I'm doing is sharing that with you simply connect it up to your mains so it's straight into there and don't know if the camera will pick this up but it actually charges up at um, if it's charging a two cell it's uh, 1,500 milliamp hour or 1.5 amps is, is exactly the same thing. It's just a different way of representing it. Or if it's charging a three cell, it puts it out at one amp. So it's a thousand milliamp hour. And you've got your two uh, connectors down the bottom there. So you just simply connect up. You just, it's only the uh, balance charger port that you connect up with. And then I plug this into the mains. And I simply connect up to the main, so there's no on and off switch with it. And then you get two red LEDs, so it's charging up the two cell. 
and the three cells green because obviously it's not charging that up. If I plug in a three cell, obviously the L3 will go to red when it's charging. Once one cell's charged, it doesn't matter which one it is, that will then go to green. Uh, and then obviously eventually when it's all finished charging and it's balanced charged, you can all of them will go over to green. So I find this a brilliant system. You actually know what it's doing uh, and you can tell when you're getting close because one of them would have, would have dropped off, but always better to leave it till it's finished and they're fully balanced charged. Now, with balanced charging, I find this really accurate. Um, uh, each cell should be charged to 4.2 volts, uh, and uh, I find it 4.2, it's never ever gone over, uh, which is important, you mustn't go over 4.2. And invariably, if there's any slight change in the uh, cells and the balancing it will be 4.19 and 4.2. So that's really close, um, closer than a lot of other charges I've tried. Some manufacturers are getting a little bit awkward with charging, um, basically so you use their charger I think. Uh, so they start actually putting the balanced charger port sort of locked away inside here which is quite difficult to get to. Uh, or this one you can actually pull it back out but you know some of them are designed that they're actually going to sit just about back in there so they're really difficult to actually get attached to the actual charger itself. So what I do, uh, and this isn't actually a problem one because it's got a long cable, but basically just connect it up with one of these cables and I'll um, it's a balanced charger uh, cable and I'll put some links down in description for you again and then you can just simply plug that in into there so you don't actually have to have the battery right up hard tight on it or some of them won't even fit this this actual battery will not actually fit onto this charger without using the extension cable so let me show you a battery that's out of balance. I mean, then this isn't by a lot at all, but it's just happened to be in that sort of configuration. And so another little um, tool I use, which is absolutely brilliant, I find, you could use a meter on it and meter each one uh, inde independently. But this little thing, they're a couple of pounds, they make a hell of a noise. Um, and it's actually an alarm that you can put on your uh, quad as well for a low battery warning if it doesn't come with that on your one or you want to set it at a different level. Uh, but it actually measures the cells which is another sideline of what it does and I'll do a link in description, I've done a full review on this as well, I'll do a link down in the description for you. But as you can see we should be, uh, if this was fully charged it would be 8.4 um, volts and what it's coming in at is 8.33 as you can see and it's 4.14 and it's uh, 4.19. So one cell is nearly charged and the other one is quite a little bit off. So what I'm gonna do is plug that into the charger, connect it up to the mains. I find that a better way. Sometimes you can get it a little bit confused if, you've, if you're already in the mains because it's, these are flashing green because uh, they're not connected and you connect one in. Sometimes it doesn't actually connect up to charge. So I think it's better to connect the battery then connect it to the mains. And I'm gonna leave that uh, charging and then afterwards we'll measure it and see how accurate it's got. So there we go as you can see um, the one that's flashing means that there's, it's not connected to a three cell basically or, or if there was a problem with your cable obviously one of these would just pulse like that so it wasn't actually charging through it so uh, it, I think it's quite a good system I quite like it anyway. So I'm going to pop that out of there and just pop it on here and see what we read prepare for the noise 3.9, so it's charged 1 to 4.2 and 1 to 4.19, so it's much better balanced. Now before, that was balanced uh, off one of the, the actual one that came with this to charge it, and there was well, um, uh, 0 0.05 volts sorry, between the two differences, so that's quite a lot. Um, I mean, it's much better to have it like this. We're going to get a lot more performance, like I say, either a longer flight or a more aggressive flight with this. And here's a three cell that I've charged in it. Uh, another good thing about these uh, little testers and everything is e if you put them around the wrong way they just don't work so and it doesn't damage them either but as you, as you can see um, it's a three cell like I say 12.6 should be the actual uh, charge uh, three times 4.2 and basically it's 4.2 um, 4.19 and 4.2 again, so really accurate. Um, I've not had a problem with this. 
Couple of points on safety on lipos. Uh, as you can see, hopefully the camera will pick this up. This one's really, they're sort of shrink wrapped and, and this one's still got very clean edges to it and there's no bulging or anything in it. This one, on the other hand, is bulged and if I push it in, you can see it sort of deflects in but it will pop back up again. The edges aren't crisp anymore um, and basically th this one's damaged. Uh, I wouldn't dare do anything with this at all. Uh, but, uh, and just be aware, if they do blow like that, I wouldn't touch them with a barge pole to be honest. Um, just uh, dispose of it properly. And it happens to little ones as well. So a little tiny one here, um, done the same thing as well. Uh, I've only had three actually go in the two years that I've been doing this. And uh, they don't go very, and I have an awful lot of these because have a look at the reviews. I do loads and loads of them. Um, so it's quite rare to happen, but just be really careful with them. I store my lipos either in a lipo bag, like this one, um, and I'll put a link down in the description to it, uh, or you can, or in a tin. I've got a tin that I keep them in uh, to keep them safe, and also I use the, the tin or the lipo bag uh, when I'm charging them as well. Just uh, keep them safe. Um, you really don't want to fire inside your house, or I, I charge in the motorhome as well. Really don't want to fire there. Okay, so in conclusion, uh, I find these absolutely brilliant. I've actually got three of them. Uh, means with my professional charger as well, I can be charging four batteries properly. And uh, it hasn't cost me a lot of money to get these either. So it's really good, I think. Uh, and this is just my opinion. Like I said, I've been doing this a couple of years. Uh, I absolutely love the hobby. Uh, and I really have sort of, <laughs> it takes up a lot of my life. Uh, but I really enjoy it. And I'm only sharing my experience with you. Um, per perhaps this isn't for you, or perhaps you have a better idea and then that's fine if it has helped you in some way give us the old thumbs up um, and subscribe to the channel please and uh, the worst that could do is just encourage me to do some more mm -hmm.